So we're looking at a range from day 14 to day 35. And in that range, it's pretty much a linear relationship. So I'm gonna pick two points that are kind of near uh, round even numbers. And as I go 14 to the right, I go up 60. So 60 over 14. That's a little bit over four. Maybe 4.3 if I had to round. Which slope is closest to that? 4.5. What does the C intercept represent in the graph? So that's this point here. After zero time has went by, what was the cost? So that's like the initial or starting cost. A. They want to know what's the value of M or the slope. So you go up 2, right 1. Slope is 2. So first I'll look for the intercept, which is at 5. So those look good. And then I'll look for the slope. I'm going to go up 3 and right 1. So 3 over 1 is my slope, or just 3. C. This graph shows a car traveling away from a starting point at a constant speed. Here at 2 hours, we're at 110 miles. And then a half an hour later, 2.5, we're at 135. So in a half hour, we travel 25 miles. If they want to know the speed in miles per hour, I can just double that. And it's going to be 50 miles per hour. And that's the answer. We're looking for a graph of the number of calories from fat as a function of the number of servings. So as we have more servings, we're going to have more calories from fat and they're not going to go down. If we have zero servings, though, we won't have any calories from fat. That's why A is the right answer. This is the function for this graph. My intercept is here at 2, so that tells me that C is 2. If you look at my slope, rise over run, I'm going up 2 and right 6. So my slope is 2 over 6, and they want it in the lowest term, so that's 1 over 3. And A is on top, and so A is 1, B is 3, and C is 2. The smallest one here is A. That's why B is the answer. So X is the 3 credit hours, and Y is the 4 credit hours. So if we're looking for a total of 16, when X is equal to 0, Y could be 4. And when Y is equal to 0, X is going to be 5 and 1 third or so. So this one matches those intercepts. That's why A is the right answer. To find the slope of line T, I can pick any two points and use the slope formula. So I'll take 3 fifths minus a negative 2. That's the change in Y from these two. And I'll take 9 minus 5 halves. That's the change in X. So if I think about 2 in an alternate form, I could think of it as 10 over 5. And there's two minuses, so we'll change that to a plus, And we have 13 fifths on top, on bottom. If we think about 9 as being 18 over 2, I now have 17 halves. And since I'm dividing by a fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So instead of dividing by 17 halves, I'm going to multiply by 2 over 17. 13 times 2 is 26. 17 times 5 is 85. And this can actually reduce. If you divide the top and the bottom by 13, you end up with 2 fifths, or 0 0.4. What is the value of m? I'm going to pick two points on the line and use the slope formula. So here I have negative 2, negative 1. And here I have 0, 2. So 2 minus a negative 1 all over 0 minus a negative 2. So this is 3 over 2, or 3 halves, also known as 1.5. Line L is shown in the plane. The point with the coordinates 2 comma C is on the line. What is the value? So if I start here with an x of 2 and I follow on up, it's hard to find an exact value, somewhere around 2.5, a, a little bit less. So I need to write the equation of the line. 
I know my intercept is 4, and I have two points. I have 5, 0, and I have 0, 4. From that, I can write the slope formula. 0 minus 4 all over 5 minus 0. So negative 4 fifths is my slope. So if I write this as negative 4 fifths times 2 plus my b value, which is 4, I have negative 8 over 5 plus 4. I could think of 4 as another version and write it as 20 fifths. If I do so, I'm down to 12 fifths. So that gives two whole ones plus two fifths left over. So 2.4. The graph of the function f of x is shown over here. And then there's another graph. This one's a line that is not shown. And we know it starts here at 10 and it has a slope of negative 1. So it goes down 1 over 1. And because of the scale, it's going to look like that. And they want to know what is one possible value of a such that f of a is equal to g of a. And if you draw this line, they intercept at two points, here and here. So we're looking at 2 or at 8. The trickiest part about this problem to me is that you have to count over every 2 for every 1. The scale is different for the x and the y. So we're looking from 1916 to 1926, so we stop here. So we went from 421,000 or two 421,000 from 397,000, and this is over a 10-year period. So 24,000 divided by 10 is just 2,400.